The software development world has been rocked by latest zero day remote code execution vulnerability in Apache library Log4j. Log4j is an open source Java logging library. You might wonder in the world of frequent zero day vulnerabilities, why this specific vulnerability is a big deal. There are combination of factors. Number one, Log4j is a very popular logging library for Java applications and it's a de facto standard for application logging. Number two, the vulnerability is relatively easy to exploit. We'll see that in a minute. And number three, the impact could be dire with 9.1 CVSS, Common Vulnerability Scoring System score. So it's a combination of popular open source component, exploitability, and the impact. So now I'm going to talk about the analysis of vulnerability. The general understanding is logging framework would treat messages only as data and handle basic formatting needs to decorate logs. However, log4j2 added lookups. Lookups provide a way to add values to the log4j configuration at arbitrary places. JNDI, Java Naming and Directory Interface, as the name suggests, it's a Java API for naming and directory service, which allows one to interface with DNS or LDAP to look up data and resources. Unfortunately, one of the data types that can be returned is a URI pointing to a Java class. In the case of adversary, it might even download remote classes and execute them, hence remote code execution. Even logging message as simple as capturing user input can trigger a remote LDAP call, causing untrusted Java classes to be instantiated. Now I'd like to introduce James Getty from our security research team, who's going to walk us through how to exploit, what is the implication, and what are the mitigations. Thank you, Jagat. So what we're demonstrating here is the exploitation of the log4 shell vulnerability. So quite straightforward, really. I have a vulnerable web server running right now, and uh, that web server simply logs the requests that it receives from clients. Um, specifically, uh, there's a particular header that it will log uh, without performing any sanitization. So in the bottom screen, I'm simply submitting a request to the server, uh, and it's just logging the contents of the X API version header, which in this case is just hello world. So again, it's logging that without doing any validation on um, what the client has sent in. Uh, so you can see a message uh, in the top screen uh, where receive the request for API version hello world, where it is essentially just appended uh, the contents of the client's request. So provided the client's input is benign, that won't cause any issues essentially. So what uh, an attacker can essentially do is they can start a malicious LDAP server and a malicious HTTP server that is going to serve the payload uh, that will be executed on the vulnerable server. So that is just uh, what I'm doing here in that screen. In the meantime, I'm going to show you essentially what this payload is going to do. So within the vulnerable machine, if we look at the contents of the temp directory, uh, we will see um, just a series of files. What I'm going to try and do as the attacker is write a file called owned to that directory. I've started my malicious LDAP server and my malicious HTTP server, like an attacker would do in the real world. And what I'm going to try and do is exploit the log4 shell vulnerability with a malicious web request. That's essentially going to make the vulnerable server submit an LDAP request to the attacker controlled LDAP server. So I'm going to pass in a similar request to what I did before. But this request will contain the malicious uh, JDNI request payload. So if we watch it proceed. So this time we see uh, the XAPI version field is a little bit different. It contains um, a request to the attacker controlled LDAP server that will be resolved by the JNDI, JNDI uh, capabilities of Java. Uh, that's just the IP address of the attacker control server. And it's essentially going to request a particular resource. Now, within LDAP, um, we can have special reference resources. 
So for example, um, LDAP is supposed to, or is really suited best for serving information such as people's names, phone numbers, email addresses. It's not so good at serving large zip files or in this case, um, Java classes. So what it's essentially going to do is whenever the attacker control server receives the request, it will look up that entry, which goes to a reference uh, instance. And what that will do is then submit a request. It basically says the class you're looking for is held on this HTTP server, which is also controlled by the attacker. So the vulnerable server uh, will submit a request for the malicious class to the HTTP server and instantiate it. Uh, once the class is instantiated, it writes a file called owned, which you can see there, to the temp directory, uh, which wasn't there beforehand, thus demonstrating that the attacker was able to execute arbitrary code on the vulnerable server. And the reason this occurs is because in the input that uh, the server received from the attacker, it goes ahead and resolves that um, LDAP resource uh, without doing any validation or sanitization, uh, which basically allows the attacker to submit LDAP requests to servers of their choosing. So for conclusion, how do I prepare for next zero day vulnerability? You can't protect what you don't know you have in your software. Having a comprehensive software bill of material will allow you to view your software component inventory in a single panel of glass. For secure software development lifecycle, detection is the key to get ahead of the curve. Receiving timely and quality notifications of new vulnerabilities in open source component is immensely valuable. Next piece of puzzle is analysis of impact on your infrastructure, as well as the services you are providing to your customers. Once you understand your risk, choose the practical remediation or mitigation plan that balances business needs and software security aspirations. Software composition analysis tools help identify and automate the entire process that I described. Comprehensive inventory of open source knowledge, detailed security research, and actionable remediation advice is the key to deal with the next zero day vulnerability.